Uh, I thank you for inviting me here this, this, this evening. What an amazing period in English history the last few weeks have been. It is my pleasure to speak briefly today about the BJP's victory and what it means for, for us here in UK. Let me first address the BJP's victory and the government Narendra Modi has put together. It is easy when talking about Indian elections to get bogged down in figures. This was the largest ever parliamentary election, the highest turnout in India's history, and, and the worst result Congress has ever faced. But what is more impressive is the coalition supporters that backed the BJP. This was BJP's victory, but more important than that, it was Narendra Modi's victory as well. <laughs> Supporters from rural and urban areas, young professionals from across the globe, businessmen and women, aspirational voters who, are, who hate corruption, 10% of the Muslim vote, the BJP appealed to the people of Northern India. The BJP won the Christian territory of Goa, they also won Jammu and Kashmir, predominantly a Muslim territory. So gone are the days when Congress can frighten people and win wars through handouts and subsidies. India is a different country now. A people who want strong leadership, prosperity, the tackle of corruption and better life. In 1979, in this country, we had general election in which after years of individual dis industrial dispute and declining living standards, we decided we want strong leader. Margaret Thatcher to sort out the problems and give us a better life. This is India's 1979 moment, a break from the past and a commitment to a better future. The BJP ran an incredible campaign in India. Narendra Bai covered an incredible amount of ground, 200,000 air miles, 500 rallies in six weeks, and the use of holograms allowed him to reach previously isolated places. India showed how technology can go all in democracy, and the number of young IT campaigners the party had shown that it is a BJP that is a party of the 21st century. But, and it is a big but, there are many challenges ahead. The BJP will need to be strong if it is to overcome the following issues. Firstly, restor restoring the expected level of economic growth to India, including tackling rampant inflation and welcoming foreign investment. Tackling corruption at every level of government and beyond, including removing the black market. Ensuring that those at the bottom of the ladder are given a chance to climb up economically and socially. Reforming the tax code to bring transparency and certainty. Improving India's infrastructure, in particular the aviation industry, the railways and the roads. Reforming the tax code to bring transparency and certainty. Improving, reforming the banking system, particularly the state banks. Reducing government spending and eliminating unnecessary and expensive subsidies. Ensuring that all minorities in India, including those of different religions and castes, are protected and included in the modern India. And particularly when you see in the press or on the TV screen lately, the protection of women in India is most important. So any of these issues will be daunting challenge for a new leader. Fortunately, India has elected a man who will work tirelessly to deliver a better future for India. A future that has been endorsed by millions of Indians of every race, religion and background. And I see that global time for change, time for Modi, and we've got Modi now. Let's hope we have the change. I'm pleased to see in the audience I have my colleague, Paramus Verma as well, uh, and Paramus Manasho, 
And I think our interest as ministers is important how we can build up a relationship with you. So I want to talk very briefly about what the BJP will be for us in the UK here. As the Prime Minister said, India is a partner of choice, choice for Britain, a special partner and a valued and a leading member of the Commonwealth. The Foreign Secretary and the Prime Minister both treated their congratulations on the day Modi was elected as Prime Minister and Narendra also accepted our Prime Minister's invitation to visit London and hopefully we will see Narendra Bhai just after probably Diwali. But his relationship in Britain had been varied for the last 10-15 years. The previous government broke off ties and communication with him following the rise of 2002. But this government, led by our excellent Foreign Secretary William Hague and his deputy Hugo Swire, reversed the decision, decision in 2012, marked by a visit to Gujarat by, the, by our High Commissioner, Sir James Patton. And what we did was to, by sending our High Commissioner to, that, to Amdawar, was to engage with Modi. Having got engaged with Modi, we sent our Minister Hugo Swire to endorse Modi. So we were the first Western country to endorse Narendra Modi, followed by the European Union, until uh, very recently by the United States. So this being statement was a welcome news to the hundreds of thousands of Gujaratis who live in Britain. We watched as Gujarat has grown into one of the most successful states in India, economically, but also in regards to community cohesion. We could see from the victory rallies across the country how much more this victory meant to Gujarat in the UK and the world those his friends of England, BJP has done in the UK. So if BJP do open their markets for investors, as I think they should, they'll find Britain a ready and a willing ally. We have thousands of companies from our largest multinationals to our SMEs that wish to do more business with India. And in a 1.5 million strong British Indian diaspora, we have a group who are uniquely placed to help bring more jobs and prosperity to both countries. So it's important that we have the trade with India. We want to, in fact, if you look at the figures, currently we do 15 billion pound trade between uh, the two way trade between us and India. And if you compare that with China, we do four times more. Our Chinese trade is literally uh, 60 billion pound a year. So we look forward to doing more trade uh, with India. In particular, we want to see more exports and more inward investment in the UK. But there is still more to do. We want to make sure that India does an excellent work, one of the largest members of the Commonwealth, to help us to reform Commonwealth, which is very important. So there are exciting times ahead for India and Britain. There's one thing I want to say before I finish, and that is that during the election, I read an awful lot of negative coverage in the British press about Modi. Not a single paper in this country, even the economists said, had a good word about Modi. Not any of our BBC or ITV covered the Indian election. Whenever there's an election in South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, it's well covered by our media but not this particular election. So, and I'm pleased my colleague, Priti Patel in the House of Commons, did a letter to Lord Hall, uh, complaining about the BBC, little BBC coverage about Narendra Modi's victory. So all I ask you, my fellow Gujaratis and Indians here, uh, to make sure that we, we speak for Gujarat, we speak for India, and we make sure that we write to this newspaper in fact, I would suggest to all his friends of BJP to employ a specialist marketing or PR company to do articles that should go in the national press to show what the victory of Narendra Modi in style of leadership means to India and means to the whole world. Thank you for listening to me.